What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Narita Boy, which is the newest offering from Team 17. It's got itself build. Well, it's not even build, like I've taken a look at it. It's actually a really, really pretty hack and slash game. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today, take a look at it, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this video, you wanted to do just that, I'll have a link for you down below so that you can get straight to the wish list or get the game for yourself. That'll be next to my Discord, my Twitch stream, and my Twitter and all that fun stuff just in case you wanted to interact with me further. So anyways, let's dive on into Narita Boy for the next 25-30 minutes. I'll do my best to give you some of my thoughts about the things it's doing uh, physically, technically, all that kind of stuff, but most of the time I kind of just get sidetracked and talk about anything and everything. New game! So here we are arriving in the digital kingdom. Don't you just hate it when you're playing Xbox and you get sucked through the screen face first through the glass, man? Can't stand it. It's the worst thing that ever happens. It happens at least twice a year. And dealing with the fallout has been extremely financially inconvenient. I'm going to be honest with you. It's been kind of a pain in the ass. All right, so here we are. A little dude at the Heroes Summit. I can walk around. I am playing with a controller right now, so the first thing that I want to address about the game is that it has, like, two hands-on keyboard control. So, like, in my opinion, you're going to have to play this game with a controller. You're not really going to have a choice. I don't know, dude. Like, I just, I'm no good at playing with, like, WAST and, like, arrow keys in order to attack and defend and everything else. It does have a variable control scheme that you can play around with, but after looking at the key bindings, I sort of just opted to play with a controller. And so it's going to be up to you whether or not that's the kind of thing that sort of dissuades you from a purchase right there. Just in time, Narita boy. The flag we programmed with the call hero function gave us some wiggle room to assemble this switch and force your entry through segments of old code. This region is barely controlled by the hacker knots. You can travel through it with some confidence, but proceed with caution. Him and his hacker knots are tirelessly running through lines of code to try to find you. Pressing this button will open the door. Inside waiting for you is a holographic module of motherboard, protective mother of us and all the programs inside the digital kingdom. 
She's in the capital of the Digital Kingdom, sustaining the Trichroma, overseeing the code, closing breaches, fixing bugs. Since the arrival of the Stallions, the Digital Kingdom's code has been unstoppable. The Trichroma beam as well. Alright, so I guess I'll push the big red button. Oh, it's not even a big red button, it's a giant gray stone button. See, this is why I'll never this is why I'll never be a huge YouTuber right there, is that I can't even identify simple squares in their colors. It's what happens, dude. You just kinda get caught up in the moment, and the next thing you know it's ten years later and you don't know your colors anymore. Uh, let's see here. Left stick up. Okay. It's weird considering I'm going left, but ooh, I can jump. Ooh, the animation on that jump though. Ooh, that looks nice. It's got kind of like a, I don't know if this, like, it's got kind of an Earthworm Jim vibe to it. Like, I know that they're going for, like, a Super Brothers Swords and Sorcery style graphical play right there. But just, like, the wind-up on the jump with the arms going up and sort of the momentum of the legs going down sort of reminds me of Earthworm Jim for whatever reason. I don't know why. If other people don't make that connection, that's cool. But that's the first thing that I thought when I saw it. Uh, yeah, we can jump over this thing right here. All right, we'll go inside this door. Uh, there, I like the lighting effects, too. The game looks, like, really, really purty. It's also got a bit of a distortion effect for those old bubble TVs in 4x3 format from when I was a kid. I used to actually play video games on a TV that looked just like this in like the early 90s. I had a black and white TV in the attic that my parents hooked the Nintendo up to so that I wouldn't be using the TV downstairs when they wanted to watch like Cheers or whatever it was they were watching. And so anyways, this actually kind of takes me back. This is a pre-recorded message for the true instance digital hero, Narita Boy. I am Motherboard, Supervisor Program of the Digital Kingdom. I was designed line by line by the Creator, and my source a code emanates from the architectural core of the trichroma. Sorry, I had to think for a second right there, because, like, I had to breathe for a second. I had to breathe, all right? Sometimes I gotta take a little break for breathing. I was one of the first sentient programs they awoke in the Digital Kingdom. If you're listening to this message, that means that you've received our call and have decided to come to our aid. Welcome. What you see is the visual metaphor of the trichroma. The beam that emanates from its core and the three rays that rise up from our kingdom's source code. Each beam has a definite function and occupies a specific region of the kingdom. Every beam is a computational entity that creates a system of programs around it. These systems are called the Houses of the Trichroma, and there are three of them, just as there are three creator beams. The Yellow House Beam, a region of code that spans the desert simulation. The Blue House Beam, the regions of the Eternal Rains and the Blue Simulation. And finally, the Red House Beam, the most powerful and disruptive house of all. The Red House Beam is the powerful equilibrium that supports the Trichroma architecture. But him, the supervisor program that used to manage the data dump, lost his mind and betrayed us. He craves supremacy over the Red House. We defeated him and he was expelled from the Red Beam along with other programs known as Stallions. But they've returned. Narita boy, which is why we've called upon you. We need a hero who can wield the Techno Sword, the only blade forged with trichroma beams, able to destroy the Stallion Code. You must go to the Techno Father's Castle. They're the supervisor programs who forged the Techno Sword, and you must claim it from them and free us from the Stallion Menace. But that is not all that we ask. Him has inflicted still more damage. Alright, well, I talked to Motherboard, so I guess we'll go out this way and we've got to recover some kind of schwert so that we can stab Code in the face and make it go away. Treat it like Java deserves to be treated, with blades and violence. Who are you? This is him, the sorcerer, our old supervisor brother from the House of the Red Beam. He's caused huge disruption. Motherboard will explain everything. You have a holographic console with a double ansible to contact her. Whenever you find a holographic console, you can communicate with the motherboard. What's more, the encryption is sufficiently complex to prevent him's hacker knots from being able to tap into your dialogue flow. Ooh, we got an Ansible. We're future forward for the 1980. That's a sweet ass face right there. It's got a handlebar mustache. Immense sorrow runs through my code seeing how the first of the creator's 13 memories has been destroyed. This demolished totem gives access to the creator's memories. The creator placed them in different parts of the kingdom as a security measure. If something were to happen to the creator, the digital hero would be able to immerse himself in his memories to reactivate the digital kingdom's passive memory and thus keep the source code updated. Man, that was a sentence right there. That was a sentence! That was a sentence that had some mileage to cover. Now, we need them because him has erased the creator's memories, the 13 that make up the meta-neuronal network. The creator can't remember. The creator has forgotten that he sustains his kingdom, and because he is forgetting and the equilibrium and the trichroma threatens to fail, him and his stallions have once again invaded us. How we managed to erase his memories, we don't really know. It's a mystery that maybe you'll solve as you travel through them. You'll be a psychonaut and a hero, but remember, if the creator permanently forgets, the digital kingdom will be lost. Him will control the most powerful red beam subjugating us to his darkest desires. The 
Trichroma will be destabilized and will be under his rule. Even if you kill thousands of Stallion programs, remember that only the creator can totally eliminate the Stallion code that is gradually appearing in thousands of lines of source code. You need to find 12 totems, piece together their code and journey within them. Only by unlocking them can the creator retrieve his memory, so hurry. One last thing, son of the Trichroma. It is not possible to travel to the first memory through his broken totem, but you don't have to retrieve it. The 12 remaining memories is sufficient for the creator to remember. But you should know that there are five backup floppy disks in the Digital Kingdom. If you find them, you can rebuild this first totem. We will be eternally grateful if you manage to do it. Okay. Like, a bit of an info dump here at the beginning. I'm actually not, like, a massive fan of giant expository dumps at the beginning of games. Uh, because at the beginning of the game, the real goal is to get the player-like engaged. And right now, they've got a lot of stuff going for them. There's a lot of lights. There's a lot of blur effects. There's a tremendous amount of style and, and sort of visual substance going into the game right now. But I usually recommend that a game sort of start out... I don't think I can do anything with that right there, but it's very spooky. I usually recommend that a game starts out with kind of like a flash forward or like a flash back effectively where the player gets to get their feet wet with like five minutes of combat and then you do the expository dump because to my mind that right there, it really helps like hook them in because you know, you're not forcing them to read for 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of the game. You're getting them straight into the action and once you've given them like a taste of that, the desire to get a little bit more is enough to get through like the expository elements. Uh, Narita Boy, we haven't introduced ourselves. My brother programs and I are agents of the capital. Motherboard coded us to move through the digital kingdom, investigating the mysteries of our kingdom's source code. We also help any program in the digital kingdom adjust its code where necessary. I wanted to warn you about this simple but malicious stallion script that surges up from the ground. Jump and dodge it and don't try to destroy it. Okay. So I guess I'll jump over the top of it right there. We don't even have our sword yet, so... Oh, I can climb. Nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Apparently, I can kind of ditch out off the wall, too, if I wanted to press the B button. I am using an Xbox controller, just so you can know exactly what I have in my hands, uh, so that you can get an idea mentally of kind of like the positional things that are happening with my hands while I'm playing. It looks like I can actually mount up right here. Okay, so that's one of the little grabby boys right there. Is that a... Okay, that's not a ceiling right there. I don't know if I was going to bump my noodle on it and fall back down into the weird little gropey hand. And, you know, I'd rather not get groped right now. Binary pastures. Apparently we got robo sheep that are just chilling around. Ah, uh, yes. You'll need a techno key to go through the door. The monoliths are encrypted slots. Inside them's an age-old program, as ancient as the motherboard, an old woman known as Baba, who, by the way, is very pleasant. All the programs of this region know her and she'll safeguard anything that's entrusted to her. Help the techno fathers and the priests of the portal. Okay, so I'll visit Baba at some point. What's out this way? Probably just have to ditch out over the top of this stuff. Perfect. Sword, are you around here? Me, small brain. Require edged weapons in order to make myself stimulate. I assume that we just have to avoid these guys. Like, we don't have any weapons or anything right now, so... Once we do have a weapon, maybe we'll be some kind of, like, tangible threat to these idiots. But, for the moment... Oh, God, that was very, very close. Okay, you go back to your normal pathing. Is that the Techno Sword right there? Give it to me. Give me give me the Techno Sword. Oh, maybe the Techno Sword is inside of here. I thought, I don't know, dude. I saw a sword, and it was levitating in the sky like it was made out of some kind of code magic. And so I thought to myself, like, I'm going to pluck this, but... It looks like it's just a decorative sword. It's just, like, decorative for right now. Uh, The hall? Okay, I can walk. I thought it was water for a second. Like, I was going to fall into it and drown. Narita boy. Access to the underground garden is restricted. You'll find the access techno key in the higher levels of the castle. Well, there's stairs right here, so let's access some higher rooms. There's no elevator weight music, dude. My tropes have been disrupted. The Techno Algorithm Hall. All right, definitely weird. Welcome, Narita boy. The Techno Sword awaits you. We forged it the day the stallions were expelled from the Digital Kingdom. We told ourselves that if they returned, we would need the concentrated power of the Trichroma to stand up to them. Of course, a very special hero from beyond the source code to wield it. At the end of the hall, take the elevator that will lead you to the Techno Sword. You just don't, like, have it on you? I guess, like, okay, fair enough. 
fair enough. Apparently, I mean, they are wearing robes and they are doing crazy chants and stuff. Something tells me that these guys like to hang their hat on ceremony. And thus, the case that we have, like, a big massive hall where the Techno Sword is stored instead of them just, like, handing it to me. Apparently, you know, they're big on showmanship. Oh god, I almost died. I was almost murdered by graspy hands. Anything in here? I was wondering if that was a pit right there. I kind of had trouble telling, but... Nice, dude. I need to get a big giant stone door on the front of my house that opens when you clap. I definitely feel like that would set the proper tone for people entering my abode. My lair, as it were. So it's just like an eternal dance party in here. Come on, give me the sword. Oh cool, I get to have like a little dance party with him too, so I'm not being left out. I get to like, you know, get my two-step on. Apparently we got some new ability. Apparently my my sword can shoot. Ooh, okay. That looks flashy. Absolutely. That looks really, really good, actually. There's a lot of frames in that swing animation right there. And there's not too many, so it's, like, perfectly placed. Oh, it wants me to do the home run? All right, let's do the home run out here. Okay, there it is right there. Come on. Blap! There we go. Just give it to him right upside the head. Do I have, like, a dodge or anything that I can pull off? I love that flash animation right there. And then the death animations on the mobs look really, really good, too. Like, there's that perfect gap, I think, when it comes to animation design in a game like this, where you can have too many frames, and then it looks kind of, like, Uncanny Valley-ish. But, like, there's, like, that perfect amount of frames and also smudges on any given, like, swing or any given attack. If you don't know what a smudge is, the smudge is... I tried to pause it so you can see the smudge. You see how the sword kind of, like, whips out and it turns into almost like a wave that's going out in front of the player? That's called a smudge right there. That's what that's called. And so, anyways... If you can get just the perfect number of frames into an attack animation or a jump animation, and then you just round out the spots where it looks a little bit chunky or edgy with a smudge, foof, uber satisfying right there. That's the good stuff. Oh, more enemies. All right, well, we can press to activate our shotgun, or we can hold it down to do our ultra beam. Uh, I just ultra beamed everybody. It seemed more awesome. Like, the shotgun is cool or whatever. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm okay with the idea of the shotgun, but when you give me an ability that's like hyper beam, and you, you physically threaten me with a good time of being a Pokemon, I just, I can't get around it. I'd like to kind of stay back and not catch those claws right there. It doesn't look like I have a dodge or anything yet. Oh, I think we gotta be like at point blank range for that to actually work. Okay, let's try it. More enemies? I like the shotgun sound. That sounds really... Oh, my God. There's a pit right there. Okay. And I have fallen inside the pit. I overjumped, okay? I overjumped twice. There's actually, like, momentum and velocity to the jump. That's actually pretty fast right there. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I'm about to pre-time that. Can I kill it? I mean, I want to attempt killing it, but... So, like, like I said, it's kind of hard to, like, change your direction in midair because your character actually has, like, physical velocity. Uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to go from here. Not that way is the answer to the question. Oh, I gotta climb the wall right here. Okay. Yeah, let me get around this dude then. Uh, I'm kind of hurting on health right now. This Tory station houses downloadable packages used to enhance the quality of the hero program. You'll find them throughout your adventure. You'll need, to, you'll need them to progress and become stronger. Okay. Fair enough. Does it give me health back? Because I'm doing a really, really bad job right now at playing video games. There's our dodge. Very nice. Uh, use dodge to escape offensive attacks. Use it in the air to cover more distance. There we go. Oh, it actually flips the character around and, like, makes him back dodge, I guess? So we, like, booty rush in a direction? I like it. Twerking for distance. I respect it. Son of the Trichroma, you've reached the first totem, and as you know, you must penetrate the Creator's memories. Every time you release a memory, it will return to the Creator. Meditate in the mists of the code and connect to the Creator's oniric flow. 
<laughs> when you can, I've never seen that word in my life. The totem will open and allow you to visit the Hall of Memories. I'm not going to pretend like I'm particularly well-read or incredibly literate, but I have never heard that word before. Come on. I like the little arcade segments, too, with, like, the pop-ups and kind of, like, the voices that really, really take me back to my childhood playing, like, you know, video games in an arcade. So what does this do now? Oh, it's a door that opens up. Okay. What's going on back here? Son of the Trichromo, you've reached the first totem, and as you know, you must penetrate the creator's memories. Every time you release a memory, it returns to the creator. Meditate in the mists of the code and connect to the... Oh, okay, this is the same thing. So I guess there was two paths to get here? I guess there must have been? Because the same dialogue is on either side of the first dungeon. So, like, could I have come from the other direction? Did I, like, miss a path or something? For the most part, I felt like I was on rails, but now it's got me kind of curious. Uh, I think we need a key for that thing right there. Can you do anything with these little background bird boxes or whatever? Alright, this is kind of, uh, some weird scary imagery. My name is Lionel Pearl Nakamura. I was born in Narita, a city that's located in the prefecture of Chiba in Japan. They say that the summer I came into the world was a very hot one, and the sound of the cicada is particularly resonating, but I don't remember that. Nor do I remember that my father was American, a Gaikokujin, and apparently on that day, he was particularly troubled by his work. Sorry if I butchered that. You may not have guessed this, but I don't speak Japanese, so... If my pronunciation is off, I'm just gonna have to beg your forgiveness on that one, okay? But there's one thing that I do remember. An intense light and a voice emanating from it. It was a gentle voice that sung me a lullaby. I remember my mother among patches of color. A mosaic of shapes intoning sounds from a faraway dimension. Mommy. Okay, so like now my, I'm gonna have to kill some kind of boss or something that's like one of these guys' emotional hangups or something like that. Or it's like a representation of like his pride or like his lust or like his gluttony or something. Is that what's gonna happen? I feel like that's what's coming. Well, the door's open, so I assume that means I'm allowed to continue. I'm not really interested in doing more dialogue, so like, I'm not gonna. Woo! Oh, I was gonna get him with the shotgun comp. There we go, get him with the shotgun right there. Perfect, he, actually the shotgun's pretty strong. Like the shotgun's kinda no joke, like it actually lays kids down. Okay, controls, they feel pretty visceral, like they feel pretty good. Like honestly, the tactile feedback from the game is really, really well and well, or is really, really good. And while I'm not usually a fan of controller vibration, I think they've actually got the controller vibration locked in pretty well, too, to add sort of impact to the attacks. Not that it needs it. I mean, even independent of the controller vibration right now... Oh, that's not good. Uh, anyways, even independent of the controller vibration, uh, the attacks seem like they have the sound effects to back up what's happening on screen to give it sort of that impact and that sort of violence that makes gameplay in combat feel better. I push at the button. Here, brother. This is the access techno key to our garden. Once in the garden, contact the quantum meditator. He has a techno key that you're going to need. Take the opportunity to meditate with him. Transcending at his side and walking the path of the trichroma in the light of his luminous code is one of the greatest experiences the digital kingdom has to offer. Okay. Well, we got a techno key. I don't remember. Oh, I forgot there was a jump right there. I wasn't looking. All right. Well, we've got one health left to make this happen. I have no idea how to heal myself, uh, and we are down to our, our last little health bobble right there. So, gonna have to play this one a little bit more carefully, I guess. Ah, more enemies. Well, I was moving back to where we came from, just to sort of... 
I died? Apparently I died. And it looks like death is not actually altogether that punishing. It just kind of brings you back from the previous room. So I guess we got to deal. I didn't see the bats. There we go. We'll take care of the bats. Right oh, I can't shoot the gun in the air. Okay. I was going to jump up and hit that bat right there, but didn't go that way. I'm going to get around behind this dude. There we go. Shotgun him. And not exactly where I want to be, but I am glad to see that we can kind of pit kill that guy. Uh, we do have a lower attack too, so you do have like a crouching attack right there. And I'm sort of curious how that's going to come into the overall gameplay experience. No damage on touch, so that's a big plus for me right there. The enemies only hurt you when they are actively engaged in an animation. I am learning that I need to play more platforming games. Apparently, my embargo on platforming, like, I actually, I don't particularly enjoy platforming games, and so I never play them. That's a big difference between me and a couple other people that cover games. It's just like, I, I just don't play platformers. I just... I don't know. I was born in the 80s, and every video game back then was a platformer. And so many times I feel as though I've seen all the platformers that I ever want to play because, like, the first 15 years of my life were basically all platformers. Until you got to, like, the Super Nintendo generation, Sega Genesis, then you started to see a lot more RPGs and stuff. But, uh, I don't play a lot of platformers, and what I'm learning today is that my lack of playing platformers is now starting to punish me. It's starting to bring me a physical pain here. I guess we probably could have gone to the right as well as the left inside the elevator. I failed to consider that as like an alternate pathing. Is that our guy? It is. And there's the underground garden. I like how compartmentalized everything is. Like, we haven't covered that much ground, but all these little areas and, like, recessions and caves and things that you go inside of are sort of nested into the background. It's kind of a, a cool design style. Three algorithmic altars must be activated. This triad, as powerful as the trichroma itself, will activate the transcriber of symbols. This machine, created by the agents of the capital, allows you to transcend to other regions of the code using the power of the symbols. We call them jump patterns. Take a good look at the trichroma's fundamental symbols, the metaphoric expression of its beautiful code. There are always three. Remember, three. One for each beam. Okay. I guess I gotta figure out a way to keep him awake. Oh, but it opened up a door, so at least we activated a path. Weird game, though. Definitely doing a pretty good job at sort of show, don't tell. Like, piecing things together, using a lot of language that's kind of foreign to me. Okay, there's a little shrine right there. Down here was that door that opened. Okay, that thing's not evil. It's not an evil bunny. We verified that it is not an evil bunny. So we prayed at that shrine right there, and I'm assuming there's going to be one more because he said something about always threes. So where's the last one at? Probably over to the right. You're going to make me deal with a couple stallions over here? Huh? 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 Well, we activated two of the lighty things, so that door is going to open. I don't remember if that's like Baba's door or what that's supposed to be. Here's our last shrine, though, so that should activate the bowl thing up at the top, if I'm assuming correctly. Hey! I assumed and I didn't make an ass out of anybody. All right. Well, this is Narita Boy. Uh, the game looks great. It feels great, too. The combat's really, really good, and it's just oozing with style. Really, the only thing I have to complain about is the lack of kind of like keyboard mouse controls, but like maybe that'll get added on in later. We can take a look at the options right now for any prospective buyers. You can take a look. We can disable the screen shake and the controller vibration. You can take a look at the controller mapping right here if you really, really want to. And in fact, we could probably take a look and see if there's like a, a mouse key binding right here. There actually indeed is not. Uh, so anyways, I think that would probably be like my one main thing is that I just prefer to play with wasp spacebar and a mouse when I play stuff like this. But then again, it's not really that hard for me to like throw on a controller either. So like, you know, if you don't have a controller and you prefer to play it on a controller and you don't like the current control scheme, it's going to be a bigger impediment to you than it was to me. Uh, it looks like we have some resolution settings. 
Uh, looks like we can go full screen or we can go windowed or whatever. You can also do a soft CRT filter right there so it's much less blurred, just in case you like the sharper edges. Yeah, there it is right there. I do count myself among that number. Uh, that does get rid of the glow effects and things, just in case you're not a fan. And it's not that I'm not a fan of it, but I do like that soft filter right there being turned off. And then, of course, the standard fair audio split. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for stopping on in. This is Narita Boy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. See you all next time. Bye-bye.